Okay, welcome back. So let's move to lecture four. And this one, we're going to talk about pressure velocity coupling in open phones. So let's see what is this pressure velocity. Now to solve this uh, the Navier source equation, we need to use a solution approach able to deal with the non-linearities of the governing equation. So these are our general Navier Stokes equations with no models, no additional, you, you, you will add models, but somehow we need to solve to deal with these non-linearities, but also we need to couple all these equations. Okay, so this is why it's called pressure velocity coupling. So there are many methods to do that. Okay, just to name a few, we have pressure correction methods or predictor corrector type. Stuff, stuff like simple, simple C, simpler PISO. So now you see the names of the solvers in open phone, like PISO phone, they are coming from these methods. You have also projection methods, stuff like fractional step, you know, or operating, splitting, MAC, SOLA method, uh, density based methods and um, preconditioned solvers, stuff like Riemann solvers, raw solver, HLLC solvers, Eno, Wino methods. Then you have artificial comp compressibility methods, artificial viscosity methods, just to name a few, okay? There are many methods. This is an area of active research, but probably the most widely used methods are the pressure-based uh, methods, okay? Or the pressure-based approach, the predictor corrector type, and the density-based approach. So historically speaking, the pressure-based approach was developed for low speed in compressible flows, while the density-based approach was mainly developed for high speed compressible flows. However, over the year, both methods have been extended and reformulated to, to deal with all the speed flows, okay? So there is no limitation. In OpenFund, you are going to find segregated pressure-based solvers, okay? So these are the approaches used in OpenFund for pressure to deal with the pressure velocity coupling in the Navier-Stokes equations. Uh, the following methods are available in OpenFund, simple, simple C, and PISO, okay? The pimple in open phone, this is something that they, they came out with that name, but that does, doesn't exist in literature. You have another, let's say another name. So you're going to find the solvers in, 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 in the following directory, okay? You have all the solvers. Okay, so what I mentioned about the pimple, okay? It's kind of a hybrid between simple and PISO, okay? This is how it's known in open phone. This, this is the, the, the <clears throat> the jargon in, in open phone but outside open phone it is a, a piso iterative piso okay known that method uh so this formulation can give you more accuracy and stability on using very large time steps or in pseudo transient simulations so in open phone the piso and pimple methods are are formulated and remember you have the piso iterative and piso non-iterative so so let let me put here this one, this comment here, that this will be piso iterative to make it clear and piso non iterative. Piso non iterative. That sometimes is called nita. Okay, piso iterative and piso non iterative. So are formulated for a steady simulation, whereas the simple and simple C methods are formulated for a steady simulation. However, they can be extended. There is no problem, but these are the standard formulations that you find in OpenFund. So if conserving time is not a priority, you can use the pimple method in pseudo transient mode. Know that you can reach steady solutions very fast and and, and very stable methods, okay? So this pseudo transient pi pimple method is more stable than the simple method, but it has a higher computational cost. But at the end of the day, we want all, always more stability and accuracy. So it's always a good idea to use pi pimple pseudo transient. Uh, also, the pimple tends to be uh, faster than the fully transient. So pi the, the pseudo transient pimple is something in between the simple or steady and the pimple on a steady. Depending on the met uh, on the matter and the solvent the solver that you are using, you will need to define a specific sub dictionary in the file SV solution. So you have seen that simple piece of pimple that is related to this pressure velocity velocity coupling and to a specific no iterative method. Okay, so here you have a few references about the origins of this method. As I say, the pimple is something in open phone is the piece iterative. So here you have some, some references about that. 
And when it comes to the simple method, okay, you have this sub dictionary in SVB solution, and the only option that you need to control that is this one number of non orthogonal corrections. So remember, this is related now mesh quality and how they correct the correction for, for, for pressure. So uh, usually, I always recommend you to do at least one correction, even if you have a perfect mesh, okay? And according now to the quality or even the physics, now if you have a very uh, <clears throat> A, a severe physics is recommended to, to increase this one three probably four but not more than five okay uh then also you can use the simple c formulation okay so this is for the simple but you have the option to use the simple c which is an improvement of the simple and i always recommend you to use the simple c okay to enable the simple c probably you have seen this consistent so you have this keyword and put it to yes and then you enable the simple C formulation, which is much f better than the simple. So my advice is just go ahead and always use the consistent formulation, okay? Uh, so this solver and these two formulations, the simple and simple C, are used, as I mentioned at the beginning, are used for steady solvers. And in the steady solvers, that is very important to define on the relaxation factors, okay? So these two formulations, they have different requirements. Okay, but usually these are the, let's say, the, the standard values or the industry standard values. Again, these values are very problem dependent, not necessarily always you are going to use these values. Sometimes you need to reduce it to get convert solution. And many times when you are dealing with turbulence modeling, this is the culprit of that divergence. So usually you need to reduce that. So this is in the simple, in the simple SIP is you can use larger on the relaxations okay and this is another reason why it's better to use this one you can reach convergence reach convergence faster but with more stability also so usually you put this one like this okay so these are the industry standard but you're going to find all around in the, in, in, in in literatures okay and manner but usually it's better to use a smaller value. So my advice is to go ahead and put it like this. All your body, b variables put 0 0.7, okay? So here it's going to be a little bit slower, but you are sure that you 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 are going to get a good a, a stability, okay? So this will be slower than this, but much faster than this. So this is my advice. Go simple C and use this on the relaxation, okay? So let's talk about this loop, how we solve this equation. So this is the particular no loop in OpenFone, how it's implemented, that there are different different authors can have different implementation, but roughly speaking will be the same. No? So basically look at that, you are solving your equations like this. Okay, so this step here, see that you solve, it starts the simulation, no? initial conditions, boundary conditions, you solve for your U equation, this one, then on the relax, then solve here for the momentum predictor, pressure equation. This is the equation that you are solving. So remember that we're not actually solving the original Navier-Stokes. We mathematically manipulate those equations to get an equivalent system. Okay, so this is what we're solving here. Then solve momentum predictor. And here is where you have this loop. And see what is happening in this loop. Okay, when you increase the number of iterations, you are getting better approximations of whatever you are computing here that then you are going to use in the momentum corrector. Okay, so this, this is what happens when you, you increase not the number of non-orthogonal corrections, okay? So in particular, this is important. See that you have this function here, this Laplacian or this gradient, okay? So this is very important to get good approximation of this term here, okay? That depends, this is the non-orthogonal correction that we saw in, 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 the, in the first lecture, okay? So usually you increase the non-orthogonal correctors and you are getting better approximations, okay? So that is what happens when you increase this, okay? So this is our simple loop, okay, used for steady simulations. Now let's talk about the piece of loop. The piece of loop is used for on steady uh, simulation, uh, simulations and it provides, again, the pressure-velocity coupling. Now, so it will do this mathematical manipulation. And in the piece of loop, you have new, new, new entries now to control that looping. So you have the non-orthogonal corrector similar to the one in the simple, but now you have these correctors, okay? So let's see what happened here. And also you have the option to set this momentum predictor, okay? So here you have some comments about this momentum predictor. And most of the time it is recommended to use it. And I think by default, it is hardwired in OpenFund to be always 
on oh yes so as you comment this one will be enabled by default so the loop and the piece of loop is something like this so see that it's very similar to the simple but look at that you have again your u equation you on the relax here you compute this equation this momentum predictor then you have this pressure predictor similar to the simple and here when you loop here you are computing better approximation of gradients and everything but now see that here is your piece of loop and correctors is controlling this so see what happens that you get a momentum predictor and now you can do a loop here and come back here so what you are doing is that see that this quantity here this equation takes velocity here this h u u is <coughs> you have velocity here so basically when you go and look back here you are get using a better approximation here so you put it here and you're computing better approximation better gradients Okay, so this is the idea of increasing the loop, the, 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 this iteration, these loops, okay? You can get better approximations of all gradients, okay? That is going to give you more stability. For sure, you are resolving more times those equations, but at the end of the day, we want a solution, accuracy, stability, okay? So this is what happens when you increase these actions. Then we have the famous, uh, uh, the, okay, <clears throat> The pimple. By the way, just to remind you that this is the piso non iterative that is called dinita, also in the literature, pisonita. Okay, you put it here. Then we go to the pimple. The pimple, remember, is the piso but iterative. It's very similar, but now in this formulation, you have the same options that as, the, as, as in the piso, but now you have this new one outer correctors and let's see what happens here okay so if we look at our loop this is our loop okay piece of iterative so pretty much as the piece of, but see that now here we have this big big loop here so this is outer corrector so what happens when you increase this one you are repeating this loop okay within your time step so you haven't advanced your time step and you are looping here to get better approximations okay and this is really neat because when you do this you increase this number of iterations you are recomputing everything you are getting better approximations so as you go back to the to the piece so see that you get an approximation here and you go right ahead to the end so this is telling you that you have you need a good mesh good uh, small time step okay good approximations to get a, a good to get a good solution here but instead in the iterative see that you go here and now you are going to repeat so you have here a final solution that then you put it back here to recompute your solution okay so this is going to give, give you much better results approximation of all those gradients and everything but have in mind that you are repeating again all this computation so it tends to be more expensive but more accurate so here you have some guidelines how to set up this one so usually in practice i like to to do at least two of this one okay I, I do at least of two of this one and probably you will see some tutorials in the uh, open phone tutorial that sometimes they, they put 20 20 is too much okay it is too much so you have to keep, be, be careful how to put this one so my advice at least two probably five okay but no more than five because it's better is is it is is too time consuming okay so here you you have this this advice here okay so this is the way i do it at least two minimum two maximum five you can put more but be careful that it's going to slow down so if you put here 20 see that you're going to repeat this 20 times before passing to the next time step so for me it's two but depending on the physics does you have very severe physics start shock wave chemical reaction stuff like that probably there is likely that you are going to to, to need more iterations in order to get a good converged solution okay but attention this is using large time steps. if you use a small time step usually two loops are more than enough okay so here you have the comparison between both of the piece on eta and piece of eta eta is the pimple in open phone and see that the only difference is this loop here okay so you are repeating everything and when you loop here you are again just to repeat it uh, you are computing recomputing everything so you are getting better gradients better approximation of the fluxes diffusive fluxes convective fluxes and so on okay so this is the pressure velocity coupling okay and i hope i convey this information in the right way or you get a better idea of what is happening okay so my advice is always go for the solvers that use the pimple pressure velocity coupling and do at least 
two outer correctors to get good uh, better approximation, good accuracy and stability. Okay, so that's all for this lecture. Thank you for your attention and see you in the next videos. Bye.